take a look at this clip. One game I set up to automatically R1 spam, while the other I control directly, quick stepping as much as I can. As you can see, against a fast two handed curve sword, it's highly ineffective. Just simply queuing up the quick step against the fast swinging of the curve sword ends up with the sword colliding during vulnerability frames. In this test, I programmed it so when on either screen any entity appears to be in iframes, they will turn blue. Otherwise, if they are vulnerable for a hit, they will be red. Both games, if you haven't already noticed, have been set to not use FP or Stanima, and the rolling player is also held in place so that they don't accidentally roll away from the attacking player. So no matter what you use, spam rolling or quick stepping into someone on ideal latency is not effective. Let's see how this changes going straight up to 500 millisecond ping. Yep, 12 seconds have passed and not a single hit. Take into consideration that 500 milliseconds is a round trip time, meaning it only takes a quarter of a second for your hit to be perceived by the other game. That and Karthus Bluttering is all that the other game needs to become almost 100% invulnerable to the other player. Let's speed this up like 10 times speed and see if the rolling player eventually gets roll caught. That's three straight minutes of rolling, and I don't get hit until I get tired and decide to give up. Same thing for quick step. About like two, three minutes of just straight quick stepping into the other player, and I don't get hit a single time until I give up. Normal rolls, thankfully, are still catchable. They still have a clear advantage over low latency rolls, but the extra iframes from the bluttering and quick step really seem to make a difference at this latency. Before I go on to explain how and why this happens, let's look at some clips I collected using varying fast hitting weapons, weapon arts, and spells to further solidify how ridiculously overpowered this latency is. So I think that's enough. Let's move on to explain how iframes work across latency. The frame data for events of animations in DS3 seem to be written at 30 FPS intervals. Here's a 60 FPS recording printing one frame of my character per two frames. As you can see, my character becomes invulnerable frame zero of the animation. But after frame 13, you lose your invulnerability. Vulnerability frames may appear to last long, but that's only if you don't queue up another roll. If you do, that's only 8 frames of vulnerability before you are immediately invulnerable again. So, doing subsequent rolls you have 13 iframes and 8 vulnerability frames. As you can see from this visualization, the majority of the time you are invulnerable. But, as some of you may already know, there's actually two iframe checks. First, the attacker checks if they think they landed a hit by checking both hitboxes and if the other player appears to be in iframes. Then, the defender checks if they are in iframes. If the first check fails, nothing happens and it continues checking every frame until the check succeeds or the weapon hitbox ends. If the second check fails, stagger and damage is not applied, but hit visual effects, special effects like poison, bleed, and heal on hit do go through. This issue with the hit visual effects being sent by the defender despite taking no damage or stagger seems to be a recurring spaghetti code issue in the Souls game netcodes, as it seems to also occur in games like Bloodborne. To easily demonstrate how things appearing different on other screens because of latency can cause strange behavior, I use Cheat Engine to freeze both characters at certain points. To demonstrate how this can happen in reality, observe how this happens with slow down footage of the Carthus blood ring roll test on 500 milliseconds from earlier. There's times where the defender is in iframes at the point of contact on both screens, times where the defender is on iframes only on the defending screen,
in times where the defender is only on iframes on the attacking screen. But how does that relate to our graphic from earlier? Well, what we'll do is have three levels. Level 1, the attacker filter. Level 2, the defender filter. And level 3, a successful hit. On perfect latency, if an attack came in, say, at this point, the hit would always land. Now let's see how this looks with 500 milliseconds of latency. The top filter shifted 8 frames. This is because on 500 milliseconds of latency, it takes about a quarter of a second for the attacker's game to be updated on the defender's animation. So, the iframes appear to start and end about 8 frames late. But Demir, you say. Clearly some hits can still make it through, counter to what the video showed minutes earlier. Ah, but you forgot that these are the frames without bluttering. Now, if you get out your pixel measuring sticks or hurt your eyes staring very closely at the screen, you may notice that there's still a sliver of hope of getting a hit on the defender. I'm not sure if it's there, but if it's a single frame away from vulnerability, you definitely could get through with just a little jitter in your latency. But wait, actually, it gets worse. There's a third shift of a quarter of a second. Because it takes that long for the hit to reach the defender's game, it effectively shifts the window even further. And because of how this latency ends up aligning the whole thing, there's absolutely no spot where a hit can end up getting through both filters. So as long as you keep rolling, you can't get hit. Thankfully, most players average ping won't even go above like 400 with you. And if their ping happens to be even higher at, for example, 750, catching them can be easy as it is on perfect latency. The only catch is, the window shifts so much that all the hits that can be made on the first roll end up in the vulnerable section of the next roll. In this final section of the video, I'll be going over the data that I collected that proves my theories. To collect this data that I will show you, I set up a test. The test starts when the defending game presses spacebar to roll. The defending game repeatedly rolls until 4 seconds have passed. During these 4 tests, 240 single damage hits are attempted on the defending game by the attacking game. Since both games are running at 60 FPS, this means that one hit should be attempted per frame. I then average the results from 3 trials and convert it into a percentage value out of the 240 total hits. I did this test on several latencies, with or without bluttering, and with quick step. And it seems to prove quite solidly that at certain latency ranges, you just get hit up to dozens of times less. On screen are several examples with the tests I did on normal rolls. Take a close look at them and scrub back if you need to. So as you saw, the hits reached an absolute low at 550 milliseconds, but started to climb again at 750. Now here is the actual data sheet for each roll type. I didn't do the same exact latency amounts for each category unfortunately, so I can't directly compare every point. But you can see the general trend is pretty consistent across categories. Hit frequency drops with more latency, then goes back up and then down again. Here's the results from the normal roll test put on a graph. You can see even 0 millisecond rolls give adequate protection, but as latency goes up it gets way stronger. Like I said before, it eventually shifts the window so that the next roll starts receiving hits at a similar rate to low latency. It just gets even crazier with bluttering and quick steps. If I had collected data at smaller intervals, you could probably see the parts where it spikes up a bit better, but this just goes to show that any amount of latency you have is giving you a huge advantage compared to low latency. I still have a lot more I could say about this, but this video is already dense enough. I hope you found this interesting or informative, and be sure to comment any questions, concerns, or criticisms you have of this analysis. I'll be sure to reply or make another video if it warrants it. I'm very interested and know a lot about how latency affects PvP in this game, 
and I haven't seen nearly enough videos made about it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future where I talk about this topic, be sure to subscribe with notifications. Oh, and if you have a latent friend that always argues it's both sided or it doesn't give me an advantage, send this video to them. It's sure to make them look silly.